this presentation, we're going to talk about the things that are on your computer kind of on a really basic level. So that's going to be talking about files, applications, and folders. We'll talk about what they are, how they interact together, and how you can tell the difference between all three of those things. We're going to start with applications. An application is computer software or a program designed to perform specific tasks on your computer. If you have a smartphone or a tablet, you'll call them apps and it's the same thing. An application is just an app. Examples of applications include Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, QuickTime, which is a video player, Skype, which is conferencing software, iTunes, which allows you to play music, and then there's web browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. These applications may come pre-installed on your computer, or you may download them from the internet, or you might add them via a disk drive. If you've got software that you've purchased, you can upload it with a disk. In order to see what applications your computer currently has installed on it, you can follow the following steps, and it's different depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac. On a PC, you want to find this little menu that's going to be in the bottom lower left hand corner of your desktop screen. You click on that. It's going to open up here a list of the applications or programs you use the most often. If you click on all programs, it will then give you a list of all of the programs that you currently have installed on your computer. For a Mac, the process is slightly different. For a Mac, you want to find the applications link that's here on the sidebar. It might be under favorites or it might be lower under a places area or somewhere on the sidebar, but you want to find the applications quick link. And then that's going to bring up a list here of all the applications that you have installed on your Mac. Files are different from applications. A file is an object on a computer that stores data, information, settings, or commands, and it's used with a computer program. Examples of files are things like Microsoft Word documents, or PDF files that you view, or a JPEG file, which is one type of image file or picture file. QuickTime movie files are a certain kind of video file. There's MP3s, which are audio files. All of those are different types of files. They're basically just an object of some sort on your computer. You can create files on your computer, just like you'd create a new Microsoft Word document, or you can download them from the internet, or you can import them from a disk or a thumb drive. You might get them attached in an email to you, um, or you just might be able to import them from a thumb drive. Those are all different ways that you can get files onto your computer. Basically, any little thing that you have on your computer that you can share is a file. So how do we tell the difference between files and applications? There's a couple of different ways we can remember this. First of all, we use applications to create, manipulate, and share files, but the files are the objects themselves that are created, manipulated, or shared. For example, the program Microsoft Word is an application. However, with Microsoft Word, you can create and edit and share individual Word documents. Basically, applications do things and files are things, and files are shareable, copyable, and manipulatable. Applications are the programs that do the sharing, the copying, and the manipulating. When it comes to files, there are all sorts of different kinds of files that we can have on our computer. So we need to categorize them. One way that you can categorize files to sort of remember them and keep them straight and keep them organized is by file type. There are all sorts of different types of files, but three that are fairly common are movie files, image files, and document files. Examples of movie files include QuickTime movie files, like I mentioned earlier, but it also includes MP4s and AVI files. Now, you don't necessarily have to know what all of these files mean. Just know that they're different movie files, and they all have slightly different characteristics and work in different video applications, but that they're all types of movie or video files. Same thing with image files. JPEG image files are probably the most common, but you also can have GIF files or PNG files. They all function slightly differently, but they are all a kind of file that shows a picture. Finally, the most common document file by far is Microsoft Word or .doc files, but you can also have PDF files, Pages files, which are created 
usually on a Mac, or TXT files, which are just strictly text files. All of these are different types of files, and they fall into different categories, such as movie files, image files, or document files. I also want to talk just for a minute about the actual names of these different kinds of files. You'll notice that most of these different file types have something that looks like three letters that's identifying the type of file. That's going to refer to the file extension. The extension is a, usually a three letter, sometimes more identifier that you'll see happen after a period in the name of the file. So for example, if you had, let's say, an image JPEG file, um, the actual file name of your picture might be something like mypicture.jpg or mypicture.gif or my file, my document, or you know, tax return.pdf or whatever it is, you're gonna see a dot and then this three letter code that appears as the file extension for those files. What that file extension is telling you is just what type of file a particular thing is. So type is one way that we can categorize files. Another way that we can categorize files is by their complexity and editability. Um, and there are two terms that I like to use to sort of divide files into two categories based on their complexity and editability. One type is product files. Product files have very few moving parts. They're very easy to share and they're not editable. So they're just very sort of small files that have kind of one purpose and can't be edited. Process files are the opposite. Process files are going to have lots of moving parts. You can go in and edit them, um, and that makes them a little bit tricky to share. Some examples of product files that you maybe have heard of are things we've mentioned already. For example, a JPEG picture is very hard to edit if you have one of those on your computer. PDF files are almost impossible to edit unless you have very fancy PDF software. .mov or QuickTime movie files are hard to edit. Same with MP3s. Those are all just sort of indivisible file types. Process files can be edited. Probably the two most common types of process files are Microsoft Word documents and PowerPoint documents. Unless you save it as a specific slideshow or an uneditable document, a person can go in, they can edit a PowerPoint, they can go in, they can edit a Word document. Other examples of process files, let's say you're using iMovie. Um, the, the working file that you can go back in and re-edit will save with a kind of file type known as iMovie Project. That's the name of the file. When you're done editing the iMovie Project, you then export your iMovie into one of these product file types, probably a QuickTime movie file or some other type of movie file. Because I know that these categories, product and process files, can be kind of confusing, let's look at an analogy. Product files are like the finished product. You can think of it as just a single marble. While it might have some interesting things going on in it, you can't really break it down into any smaller parts. Kind of what you see is what you get with a product file. Process files, and again, this is like your Microsoft Word document, process files are more like a bag of marbles. While it is one entity, you have this one bag with these marbles, you can go in and you can kind of rearrange the marbles, you can open or close the bag, it definitely is one thing, but there's some manipulability you can do and some changes you can make within that file. So that's your process file. Then these process files or product files get used within an application. And in our, in our metaphor here, our Chinese checkerboard is sort of the application. So we have all of these files and the application is how we sort it and manage it and change it and edit it. So that's one way to think about the difference between product files, process files, and applications. Finally, we need to talk about folders. A folder is a designated partition of your computer's memory where programs, files, and other folders can be located. Picture a filing cabinet, and that's what folders do. They allow you to sort and organize things that are on your computer, such as files and programs. Oftentimes, the symbol for folders look like this, and you might have a folder on the desktop of your computer or you might find a folder in the user storage area of your computer, often called like a documents area. Or you might even have folders that are stored up in the cloud and online. Folders can exist in all of those different places. Folders can even exist within folders. As you can see, I just added subfolders into the main folders on this image. Finally, it's important to know that folders are almost always set up by the computer user. When you get your computer out of the box, it may have a few folder-like areas set up. There might be user storage or a desktop, but if you want to have an organizational structure within that area of your computer, you probably need to set up folders, and you can set up as many folders as you want. So hopefully we've answered the question a little bit about what's on your computer. Remember, we have files, and those are things like Word documents, 
video files, audio files, things of that nature. We have applications. Those are th programs like Outlook or Microsoft Word or Excel that can manipulate those files. And then both files and applications can be organized into folders. So that's giving you a little bit of background information about the files, applications, and folders that are going to be on your computer.